Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today I want to build a proper version of this DRAM Duino DRAM tester that I made from spare parts a while back. So I built this thing a while back uh, from spare parts I had lying around in my parts bin using perfboard and an Arduino Uno. This is based on a project by ISS on the Defense Force forums. And it actually is a really useful project for quickly testing 4164 and 41256 RAM chips, which are commonly used in a number of retro machines. So this saw quite some use and it actually works very well. This project was first released by ISS in 2016 and it is this circuit basically and there's a little piece of software that runs on the Arduino that tests RAM chips and uh, if you follow the forum thread which I am going to link in the video description again there have been quite some updates including integrating a OLED display and things like that with this and there also is my video, my previous video, linked here in the thread, which is quite humbling. The whole project also got featured on Hackaday after I made the video, which is humbling, of course, but it's not my project. It is just me that made a video about hacking this together and showing people how to use it. There is a design for an Arduino Uno that is available on PCBWay.com that's linked here, which should work fine according to the forum posts here. There is another upgraded version that uses a display to give you more information about what is actually happening while the program runs. The initial version just has two LEDs. There have been quite some updates to the software as well, which is super nice. And uh, this thing is super easy to build, super inexpensive to build Arduino Unos. You can use knockoffs like the one I used here and it should work without any issues and is a really useful thing to have around a retro computer repair bench. And I recently got contacted by Björn, one of my viewers, who designed a proper PCB for the version I used here with the Arduino Uno board. And this obviously looks a bit neater than what I came up with here, although the functionality should be very much the same. And Björn was kind enough to send me a couple of PCBs that he had made. And he also released the whole project on GitHub for free download and free use. So you can just grab the files from there and build your own with just a few parts that you need that I'm going to show you in a second. And this is a nice segue to thank the sponsor for this video, which is PCBWay, who also produced this circuit board. They can do circuit boards of all kinds. They also offer CNC machining, 3D printing and sheet metal fabrication services. Basically everything we tinkerers require that we can't easily do at home. Their prices are super reasonable. Turnaround times are very fast. I highly recommend checking out the link in the video description. Now back to our DRAM Duino. And actually we don't need a lot to build this as I've shown in the previous video building this. Only that I actually sourced some proper parts this time and we have the PCB that Björn provided. So we need some pin headers uh, for connecting this board to the Arduino. We need a red LED and a green LED. I chose three millimeter ones because they're a little bit smaller and uh, give me more room to use this sieve socket, which is going to live here in the proper orientation, unlike what I did with my hacked together board here. And we should have three resistors, two of which are for the LEDs to limit the current going through these. And they are labeled as 470 on this board, which are the values used in the original design. Björn uh, wrote me a little letter and he said that uh, 1K ohm works better actually for not making the LEDs too bright. So I'm going to put 1K resistors in all of these three positions here. 
And I'm also using a little tactile button to start the process that's located here. And we need a pin header to switch this between the two types of RAM that this can actually check 4164 RAM and 41256 RAM. I am just going to build this and then show you how to load the software on the Arduino and then we can test some RAM, ideally. <laughs> this is going to live on here like this. And there's actually some peculiar pin spacings on the Arduino boards. Rumor has it that that was a design flaw and I worked around that by just bending these pins on my original board here to make up for that. But that was a design flaw that was introduced to the first production run of Arduinos and the wrong spacing stayed with later Arduino designs because of that. That's the legend. We are going to place all the components on here. I'm going to start with the components that are soldered from uh, the backside of the board. And then I'm going to do the pin headers last. And all the connections that I had to make with wires on my original board here are properly made in this PCB with uh, traces on the PCB. So this should be super straightforward and I'm not going to talk a lot about how to solder this. I'm just going to build this. And as I said repeatedly, this is not my design, so I'm not going to take any credit for that. This is ISS's original design, just put in a nice form factor here in a nice PCB. So I'm starting with the lowest uh, components here, I think should be the way to go. And obviously this is a lot quicker to build than my original build with a proper PCB. And making a PCB like this or having it made is not that expensive because it's just a small PCB. So three one kilo ohm resistors, two three millimeter LEDs, one red and one green as is labeled on this. The long leg on these is the positive side and there's a little minus sign for the negative side here. So we're going to put the red one here. There should be enough room for uh, putting five millimeter LEDs in here as well. But I find that these look a bit neater and there's also more room for the lever on the ZIF socket. And our little button, which is just a standard tactile button, is going to live here. Going to solder that in. That looks good. Uh, we need a two prong pin header on the top for the little jumper that switches between the RAM types. And we need the SIF socket, which is a 16 pin standard SIF socket. And it just clears the LED here <laughs> and our little jumper. That's always a good idea to check that before you solder it down. So now the only thing left to do is to add the rows of headers here. I think I want to do this while this is sitting on here so we can place our pin headers in the correct spots. So put my pin headers in here and now the board should fit exactly on that because it has the weird spacing already on the board. Yeah, that's all that's left to do, soldering in all these. And then we should already have a functional DRAM tester in theory. So I'm just fixing these and then I'm going to solder the rest of the connections with the Arduino disconnected so I don't overheat anything don't want any of the plastic to melt or anything like that. So I'm just using solder on two pins of each connector here and wait for a bit and then I'm unplugging it and soldering the rest. And there we go. Now I'm just going to clean this up a little bit and test it out. I'm also going to add a little jumper on this pin header, which I have a blue one for, that fits the blue PCB nicely. So yeah, this should be very much ready to go. 
we only need to take care of the Arduino side of things. And here's the GitHub for Björn's side and he actually placed the ZIF socket the other way around than I did, uh, which makes more sense because you have more clearance for the lever. But uh, the way I always use these is with pin one here where the lever is, so that's easier for me to remember. I did the same thing that Björn did on my original build, so placed it the other way around so, ha so I have more room for actuating the lever. But uh, this works fine like this, so I just put it in this way. Kind of my way of doing it. <laughs> Otherwise this should be the exact one we have and Björn also provides the uh, files for this. I think he uses a slightly updated version of the Arduino code, so I'm just going to download this, which is should be the latest version of the code that he just uploaded to the GitHub here, which is also available in the forum thread, but it's not as easy to find. So it seems he didn't make any changes. Stan was the last person to do changes on this code. So it should be the same code that's on my Arduino already, I think. But we're still going to download this and upload it to the Arduino. So downloaded the raw code, which I think should be suitable for my purpose here. Yeah, it's an Arduino sketch. And we're just going to open this as an Arduino sketch. And uh, I'm actually going to start up the Arduino IDE and connect my Arduino to my little laptop here. So this is just connected with a standard USB-A cable. And it wants me to create a folder for the sketch. So there's our sketch. So we should have our Arduino board in the list here. Arduino Uno. That's our board that's currently connected. And let's see if our sketch verifies. Yeah, okay. So we can upload this. Upload, and that should just be upload because our board is just, uh, has all the programming chips and things like that on board for the Arduino Uno boards. It's just a simple click on upload. And it's compiling and uploading to the microprocessor on the board done uploading. So that should be all we need to do to have a working standalone DRAM tester with our little PCB and the Arduino. So let's plug in our board and we need to plug this into a 5 volt USB power supply, which I'm going to do. And then we need some RAM to see if this actually works. And this is now set to 4164 mode. So let's test some 4164 RAM. I have just the stuff we need. This is the MT RAM, which is known for its failure rate. And these are these are labeled 4264, but they are uh, 4164 chips really. So we should be able to push start and see if this RAM chip, which I don't know if it works or not, is actually working. Let's see if this works. So it is testing and it should take around 80 seconds actually to finish all the tests. And if this red LED lights up, it's a faulty RAM chip and it just stays red. This is definitely a broken RAM chip. The chip tester, actually if it shows the green LED, it's not quite certain if the RAM chip is good, but if it shows a red LED, it's uh, very certainly broken. This one probably is as well, because it's also an MT chip. Yeah, these should all be broken, really. Let's see if we can find a working RAM chip. This should be good RAM, actually. I have a couple of good chips here. Yeah, and that actually does more passes here. That also shows us bad. Hmm.
This is a good one. Okay, and if the green LED stays on, it's probably a good chip. Uh, let's try and find a 41256 chip. And I actually have quite a few. This is now with the jumper removed in 41256 mode. And it takes a longer time because these are larger RAM chips, basically. Same physical size, but digitally they are larger. <laughs> let's see if this one is good. And as I said, it takes around 80 seconds and the LEDs are flashing during the testing period. If it encounters a fault, the red LED instantly stays on and the program stops, so you know that it's definitely a broken chip. But if it passes through all the tests, it's going to take some time, as you can see. There we go. That's a good one. So the RAM tester seems to do exactly what it's supposed to do. And uh, it looks a lot nicer than the previous version of this, version 1.0. Pretty happy with this. That's going to be super useful. Yeah, that's it already for this video. I just wanted to give you an update on where this DRAM Duino tester went from when I made the old video. I'm pretty satisfied with this, looks a lot nicer and should be a lot more usable than my original uh, design. Thank you very much for designing this and thanks Björn for sending me some of the PCBs. If you want to make your own, it's all freely and openly available. In the video description there are links to everything you need to make this and maybe you even come up with some other ideas or change the code slightly so this suits your needs. It's all available and editable and hackable which I like a lot. Yeah that's it for today. Thank you so very much for your support on Patreon and on Ko-fi and on the channel memberships page on YouTube and also elsewhere. The links to that are in the video description in case you want to give me some support, which would be highly appreciated. Also, thank you for subscribing to this channel. Thanks for your thumbs. And if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them in the video description. I'm reading all of them. Not sure if I'm going to be able to answer everything, but yeah, I always enjoy reading your thoughts about what I do here. So that's it. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.